welcome to the MMA Fan Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Stu and Blake. Hello and welcome to the MMA Fan Show. I am Blake Harrison. Joining me as ever is Stuart Heffin. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. It's a Saturday. We don't normally record on a Saturday. We don't normally record on a Saturday. And it's been a mad day. It's it been has. a mad day. As you can tell from the setup, this is an interview episode. It's not our usual uh, little format. We're doing an interview today. And it was a bit touch and go whether the interview would happen or not. We had it set up. Then we put it all down. And then we set it back up again. Um, so we have got our interview with the brilliant Lerone Murphy coming your way. Lerone is fighting Edson Barbosa Saturday, May 18th. So... Probably just a few days away from when this comes out. We're recording headlining. this one week. Headlining. Five rounds against Edson Barbosa at the UFC Apex. So, uh, yeah, give him your support by listening to this episode and then watching him fight on Saturday night. Um, do we have anything that we want to say prior to... Oh, what we are doing is we're going to do a little kind of prediction slash dream UFC 304 episode in like a week or so. So if you have any ideas of what you would like to see at UFC 304 in Manchester, if it does happen at the Co-op Arena, because uh, they're yeah, having some mate. problems. Uh, but if it does go down, which hopefully it will, at Man in Manchester, UFC 304, send us who you, who do you want Tom Aspinall to fight? We imagine it'd be Tom Aspinall, Leon Edwards, maybe MVP, Paddy, Molly, who else? Right, look, I, I need some interesting stuff here because Blake's going to probably go for... I imagine he's going to pick all the people that are actually going to be fighting. Probably. I'm going to go well rogue. And uh, <laughs> so uh, this, is a, this is a call out to all you <laughs> mavericks out there. Like, uh, if you want to see Dustin Poirier versus Tom Aspinall... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> Seriously. Um, Mohamed Makaya versus Brock Lesnar. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I'd be well up for that. <laughs> oh, amazing. So, yeah, any kind of wild picks as well. Let's make this a fun episode. So uh, we'll be doing that one for you very soon. So subscribe. Yes. That way you won't miss uh, whether you listen to this as a podcast or you watch the show. If you are watching, sorry, if you are listening to this, then why not go over to YouTube and check out the show? Because, uh, yeah. And the reason that this show keeps going and we're doing all this cool stuff is because we have some sponsors. Those sponsors are Mr. Blake Harrison. Ferocious Fightwear. Have we got a, uh, a discount code for we Ferocious We have. Fightwear. Go to ferociousfightwear.com and use the discount code MMAFAN15. That's 15. MMAFANSHOW15. And we also have a brand new sponsor, Fat Candy, for your freeze-dried sweetie needs. <laughs> there you go. These are genuinely brilliant. These are uh, freeze-dried Skittles. So delicious. Very, very Moorish. Kind of dangerous in a, in a beautiful way. Yeah. Because they're very Moorish and delicious. Fat Candy. And uh, the uh, discount code for Fat Candy is Sweet MMA. S-W-E-E-T-M-M-A. Can we say that more kind of elongated? But uh, like that as well. Sweet <laughs> MMA. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're going to put in like S W E E E E E E E T. They're yeah, not going to get their discount. Good point. Um, but yeah, no, guys, thank you for support. Please support those brands, Ferocious Fightwear and Fat Candy, because they're supporting us and helping us get you all these episodes. Um, I hope you enjoy this interview with Lerone Murphy. Lerone Murphy, how are you, mate? I'm great. Um, living life. I'm in Vegas right now. Uh, just about gonna go train in a sec. But I was just, I was just saying that I'm struggling with the weight cut here. Like seeing all the food and stuff like that, and watching the boys, <laughs> watching the boys eat. Oh, it's painful. I've never. It's actually, it's the worst place to cut weight ever. Really? Was that in like the Vegas hotels, the buffets? I think Stu mentioned yeah. stuff like that. Is that is that what it is? Um, yeah, everywhere you look, this food, literally, everywhere you look. <laughs> That's America, don't it? I remember the portions out there just like crazy. And I remember getting like chips and I swear to God, they put like icing sugar <laughs> on their chips. <laughs> so now like it's something, yeah. no wonder there's like an obesity crisis in America. Yeah, it's it's mad. So. Well, look, Me, you're, it's crazy. You're in Vegas, obviously, because next week, May 18th, you're headlining against Edson Barbosa yeah. at the UFC Apex. Um you get the call to say not only are you fighting 
Edson Barbosa, ranked featherweight, someone who's been in the UFC for such a long time, a really exciting fighter. Not only are you fighting him, you are headlining that card, yeah. your first ever time headlining. What were the emotions and the thoughts when you get that call? A mix between excitement and I wouldn't say fear, but like that fear of growth, you know, that next yeah. that next step up, that next that next level. Um but I was excited, man. I was just like, it's a no-brainer. I knew that the UFC would come into Manchester in July beforehand. Um, but I just thought, this is this is a no-brainer. I can't pass up this opportunity. It's a great opportunity and a great stepping stone. If I can get through Edson and Barbosa, then the sky's the limit, in it? 100%. What was bigger, knowing that you was going to be fighting, you know, a, a, a legend in the, in the shape of Edson Barbosa, or the fact that you was going to be headlining a card? To be honest, I'm not really bothered about the headline. I'm not. I'm not really too fussed about the headline. I'm, I'm more so bothered about the matchup um, and what the matchup brings to me. Because whether I fought him on on the, just a main card in Manchester or whatever, it's still a massive fight. You get what I'm saying? And mm. the, to me, I'm not really bothered about the main event. Obviously, it's massive. It's big. I'm happy about it, but I'm not like focused too much on being the main event. You get yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? It's more more so about the matchup for me. Well, I mean, you've mentioned you're not overly focused on it being the main event, but one thing that comes with main event is five rounds. So, yes, obviously, I think I've heard you in other interviews talk about um, you've spoken to other fighters and they've said, oh, it's just do a few extra rounds on the pad, just focus on the cardio. That's the only thing. But is there an, a, an additional mental aspect to going into five rounds? You hear people talk about pacing yourselves. You hear people talk about, you know, getting back to the stool and it's like, oh, fuck, I've got three more rounds to go. Or <laughs> so, like, do you know what I mean? Like, so has there been anything additional kind of like mental preparation outside of the physical preparation to know, okay, it's five rounds this time? No, it is definitely more mental, mentally draining because even the sparring, when you get, get into the third and you know you've got two more, it's definitely more more of a mental thing. But we've tried to focus on obviously do more rounds and then that's where you get you, you build that mental strength to say, yes, you've got just got two more. But five it's two it's two fights in a night, basically, pretty much. Do you get what yeah. I'm saying? And I feel like I feel like if you watch the Sadiq Yusuf fight when he fought Barbosa, I feel like the experience of the five round fights t um, leaned in Barbosa's uh, favour and that's why he won the fight because he's he knew, do you know what I mean? He knew, okay, whether the storm, he's going to tire out, like it's a five round fight, right? So experience played a part and that's that's something I've I've been able to watch luckily and kind of learn from and, and, and try and work off that. But obviously you just don't know, innit? To fight. You you mentioned about sparring. Have you brought anybody in to kind of sort of replicate Edson's fight style? I wouldn't say I've brought somebody in in because we've got we've got excellent Muay Thai kickboxers in in our gym, like mm. high level, high level in our gym already. Um, I've done a bit of work with Panikus Yusuf as well. Um, he's a he's a multi world champion Thai boxer. Um, I've done a bit of work with a few, few different people, but it's a striking fight at the end of the day. So it's just like, it is what it is. It yeah. is what it is. And yeah. the fight's taking place at the Apex. As far as I'm aware, you've not fought at the Apex before. You were Mr. Abu Dhabi for a while, constantly fighting over there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you done anything to kind of get a flavour of what the apex will feel like? It's a unique environment. People are paying, by all accounts, what I'm hearing is people are paying big, big money to see these yeah. uh, fight cards because there's only a, a small selection of seats. And obviously the yeah. atmosphere is not what it would be at like the O2 and maybe even Abu Dhabi and stuff like that. So has there been anything you've done to kind of go, let me get a flavour of what the apex will feel like? No, I've not been in the Apex, but I've, I've trained in at the PI, which is similar. Um, mm. It's pretty much next door, same, same like, and like the air is different out here, like proper dry and stuff like that. Even like it's so, it's so warm and humid, like it's just like you can't even, when you breathe in, it's like, oh, his sinus is a proper dry, so that's why I'm happy to go out here early to get used to that. But um, I've, I've fought in empty arenas before through COVID, right? Um, so I kind of know how that feels. Uh, the only different thing is the cage is a lot smaller. 
Mm. It's a lot smaller cage in, in the EPIC. So we've been doing a bit of a few rounds here um, at the PI, which is a similar small cage. Just trying to adapt as, as much as possible. But I know on the night, then it is like it's a fight. I always adjust to whatever whatever's happening. Tell us a little bit about the PI, because every time we have fighters on that are, that are training in or being training in there, they're, they're always buzzing yes. about how cool it is and who they've bumped into in there. Like, what stories have in you me, got of late? I just love the PI. I love the PI because you, you're just getting looked after. You're getting the best food. You're getting the best recovery, the best physios in the world. Like, I feel like the Vegas fighters are very lucky and they've got, they've definitely got that extra few percent over the rest of the world what like 100 percent they've got the, they've got the best facilities but yeah i seen dean yesterday dean have popped in yesterday mm. he walking through that i don't know who he was with but he must have been showing somebody around but it's good man you, you do like when i first went there um i was like i've seen all the fighters and you're just looking around like whoa there's this person there's this person champions and stuff like that but everyone's cool man we're all we're all similar people we're all fighters we're all similar people um, I actually bumped into Daddy Ige yesterday as well, actually. Because oh, you were scheduled to fight, fight previously, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he cool, old man? He come over and uh, wish me luck and stuff like that. He's cool. He's all right, man. Nice. nice. And in terms of you saying that the, the cage is smaller and you've prepped for that and yeah. all that stuff, when people think, oh, I'm fighting Edson Barboza, you're obviously a striker. We as fans are thinking it's going to be a striking battle. But when the cage is smaller, there's less space to run away from people. Is this an opportunity for you to try and showcase some wrestling or give Edson something else to think about? Or are you like, nah, man, I'm I'm striking with this guy and I'm going to show I'm the better striker? I'm I'm not stubborn in that regard. Like I, I feel like it's MMA. I've been training, I've been training MMA from the start. Like I'm 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 not coming back, I'm not coming from um being like a Thai specialist or Taekwondo. I've trained MMA from the get-go. So I'm just gonna feel where to fight where the fight goes and see where people feel where I could go. I've got the advantage. And that was the same in the last fight with Kulabal. Didn't plan to wrestle, but I, I clinched with him and I grappled with him and I felt, oh, I've got a massive advantage here. So yeah. that's why I went to that, do you get what I'm saying? So that's why it's important to train all aspects of MMA. How does the fight end? In the perfect world, a KO, a KO, yeah. I feel like a KO will catapult me right up them rankings and and like you've seen how wide open the division is at the minute. Yeah. You only need two, two, two wins at the top level and, and you're right, you're right in there yeah. as a contender. So Well yeah. do you do you have a call out planned or anything planned? Because you know, Chael Sonnen, I think he had that famous quote of uh, you know, your next fight starts as soon as the last fight ends or something along those lines because good. you've got to be thinking about what's going on. I've spoken to UFC uh, kind of team members that work social media and stuff like that and they're like, when a fighter has a good call out, we can run with that, put it out on social media, we're more likely to make that happen. Is that something you think about or do you think, no, that's a distraction from the fight? I mean, you, you'll be on a, I think, you, I think you'll be undefeated with a six fight UFC win streak you will probably be number 11th in the rankings because that's where Barboza is now if you win this okay. fight. It's a perfect opportunity for you to call out someone in the division, lay it on the line, you know, six fight win streak, undefeated guy, number 11 ranked. Like you could be calling your shot against people in the top 10 and, and, and arguably get it. So is it something you've yeah. considered or are you like, no, I need to just focus on Barboza? Hey, exactly that. Um, I've got a big task. This is the toughest fight of my career. Like it's a big task. Um, it's not no, it's not an all run over fight. And I feel like anything can happen. But it's like obviously I've got a roadmap in my mind. Like we'll get a pass by balls. I would like this fight. I would like that fight. But I'm never really thinking about that because I know how life works. Right? I know how life works. I know yeah, you got to go in confident and think and and do that. But I know how life works. So. Um, my mind is solely on Barboza, and then if I get if I get ten, if I go get through him, and I've got ten seconds to think, ooh, 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 I'll call somebody out. But let's let's get this fight done first. I'm not sure if Josh Emmett's got a fight booked, but I, I think that's a good shout. Just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> Again, I think it, well, so I did say that previously, and then somebody posted it like I'm calling Josh Emmett out, and I see it. I did, I, all I said was I think that that if I get through Barboza, I think that. Stylistically, it's a good fight for me yeah. to 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 go into. Um, yeah, I think he's like what number six or something, number seven. Yeah, so. roughly. Um, so I thought I thought that that would be a good fight to go into after that. But 
yeah, I'm not like I said, I'm not looking past it. I'm focused on our uh, Bob Barbos. So it's a tough task. He's, he's won two on the, on the roll now. Um, and most prospects that come up against Barbos are str struggle. Like yeah. we've, we've seen it, only the elite get past him, right? So it's a good test, good test for me. When you do get past Edson, um, do, if you do that and you come out of that pretty unscathed, do you think there's a chance you can make Manchester? If not, are you disappointed that you're not going to be fighting in Manchester? For me, I've said, if I come out unscathed, I'm definitely going for Manchester card 100%. Um, I, I, I wouldn't want to miss that. I'm the only man Keenan on the roster <laughs> ever, born and bred ever. So it would make sense. But uh, like I said, if I come out unscathed, I'll go for it. If not, I'll just go there and watch, watch the fights and enjoy the fights. Yeah, there's yeah. been a lot said about the late start time. How, yeah. how do you, what do you think about the fact that they're doing a late start time? I think the main card would start at like, was it like 3 a.m. or something like that? How do you feel about it? And secondly, how do you think that Manchester crowd is going to be at 4 or 5 a.m.? Well, um, I've been to a, the, the last Manchester card, which was yeah. Mike Bisping Henderson, and that, yeah. it was at the same time. Uh, we went out before it and... So we didn't we didn't really find it too late. It was weird coming out at six a.m. of yeah. of the stadium. That that was strange. It was a bit strange to be honest. But you just got to adapt in it. Like it's an American market at the end of the day. And until we until us UK fans build it a bit more, then it is what it is. But it, I would have liked to have seen it a bit earlier. To be honest, yeah. I would have I would have liked to have seen it a bit earlier. At least a few hours. At least a few hours. Make like push it back five hours or something. Let the Americans watch it in the afternoon. Um, I think it might uh, clash with other sports. Maybe that's why they're doing it, but I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. I just had a thought, actually. I wonder if the staff, you know, like the, the concession stands and stuff where you're buying your drinks. I hope the staff are getting paid double to deal with like <laughs> UFC fans at 4 a.m. Yeah. after they've been on like a 16 yeah. hour drinking session. I know, I know. Do you know what? That, that's another thing that I remember from last time. There's a lot of drunk people. Yeah. yeah. A lot of drunk, drunk people. Like, they've been out all night drinking all night and there's still like, fights drinking. And yeah, it's a bit heavy. It is heavy. Yeah. Okay, um, what are we are we pretty much there? Well, I know I, we're sort of a bit tight on time. I know I mean, we're tight on time. I'd, I'd love to ask you about what you but, feel like should be next for Ilya Taporia. You know, featherweight division yeah. has had a lot of movement lately. We, yeah. we, we, there's rumours of the Volk rematch, but should he rematch after that knockout? Max obviously had such a phenomenal win at, at lightweight. Yeah. Should he stay there? Yeah. Should he drop down? I, I personally want to see Max Taporia. That's the fight for me. Then, How do you feel about that top of your division? Exactly your thoughts. I believe there's two sides of the coin here, yeah? So you've got Max that's just come off a massive win against Gaethje, massive performance, looks great. Everyone wants to see that fight. It's intriguing now because he's just uh, knocked Gaethje out, but that's a weight above, yeah? And then you've got the other side of the coin where it's Volkanovski's been a dominant champion and he just got caught, do you get what I'm saying? And you've seen many times if, if the champion loses like that, after such a long reign, they get another, they get another shot, which mm -hmm. is which is kind of right. But I feel like we want to see Max, Max yeah. and Taporia. I feel like it's time to let's let's uh, freshen things up, give Volk some time out, maybe let him fight uh, Evliov or just somebody, just let him get a run out, a run. Um, not a run out, but you know what I'm saying. Um, no, I'm, get a, a I'm happy for Volk's up. next fight to be for the belt. I just don't want that to be Tapuria's first defence. It's not. I it's think not, it should be no, Tapuria yeah, yeah, Max, yeah, 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 yeah. like sometime soon, and then you do Volk versus what the if, winner in December or January. Wins, what if Max wins? Well, then? Volk's beat him three times. I think Max wants that back. I think Max yeah, is like, true, I finally true. got to beat this guy. So, true. and I think it makes money for the yeah. UFC. Yeah, yeah, so, it does. It does. I think it yeah. freshens things up for sure. I think this should. They shouldn't do too many rematches. I feel like they, yeah. they do a lot. I will, we want to see fresh fights, uh, and and now's the time to do it for yeah. them too. And Lerone Murphy, twenty twenty five. There you go. Yes, that's, it. yes. <laughs> that's the plan. That's the plan. That's the plan. God willing. We did mention that's the plan. Uh, UFC Manchester. Blake and I are going to record a show next week with um, who we think is going to be fighting there. I know that Arnold's had his fight announced, and Makayev has as well. Yes, um, we're presuming. Leon's going to be on that card. We're presuming Tom's going to be on that card. Um, who do you think the opponents are going to be for both Tom and Leon? 
I think that I think they're gonna do Bilal. I think they're gonna do yeah, Bilal Muhammad. Yeah. They have to do Bilal Muhammad. Uh, and I reckon for Tommy, it's either gonna be Cyril Gan or or Blades. Blades, yeah. yeah. What's it? One, it'd be one of them two. I think they'll have to put Paddy on there, maybe Bobby Green or someone. He'll fight somebody like that. Uh, or Moy Kano. That's yeah. a fight. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think I think it'll, they'll give him one of them two. They'll probably give him, yeah, probably give him Moy Kano, to be honest. It'll be, some good, it'll be a good card, I yeah. think. They're going to make yeah. a solid card. I think they have to, to, to give back for the time zones and stuff like that make sure to sell out yeah. and they'll, they'll build a good card man I'm looking forward to it MVP I'm really, I'm really interested to see that who does MVP get that would be an MVP, interesting one MVP MVP yeah he, he wants Ian I would have I want to see him and Ian Gary me too to be honest. but Gary's after Colby isn't he yeah, but come on, he, he, oh, he clearly doesn't want to fight him. Like, yeah. he's gonna run, run about for Colby for a year and, and, and wait for that match. He'll get, get fighting, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I really yeah. I think that'd be a great fight, MVP Gary. I'd love to see it. Look, we yeah. know you've got to get going. I want lo one last question, if I may. Yeah, Jack Shaw, another uh, UK fighter in the uh, featherweight division. Did you see his stoppage loss to Johansson Brito at UFC 301? Because, yeah. I feel like that was a bad stoppage. I know there was a lot of blood on his shin and it looked like a really nasty cut, but I feel like we've seen fighters struggling to stand and it not be stopped that quickly. And uh, yeah. as Richard Shaw came out and said, we were told it was fractured. It wasn't fractured. He had a couple of stitches and then was sent on his way at the hospital. So how do you uh, feel about that stoppage? Yeah. I think it was very early. It's, it's, it's your leg. It's just a bit of blood. You see, yeah. you've seen guys with dashes and head, head wounds bleed a lot more as well. And it's just like it's your leg. Give give him a round at least. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. give him give him a round. Like you let him get back to the corner at least. So, was it second round? Sorry, yeah, was it second round or oh, first? I think, I, I think it was second. second. It was second. second. It was second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let him get back to the corner at least and just and go from there. It didn't look like he was. It wasn't like he got kicked and fell down and, and mm. whatever. He was against the fence in the clinch and then the refs like looked at his leg and yeah, I don't think he should have been stopped. I don't Absolutely. think he should have been stopped. No, I, I agree with you, mate. Lerone, we know you've got to get going. I think you've just been called by someone off screen. <laughs> May 18th against Edson Barbosa at the Apex. We'll obviously be cheering you on. We hope everyone that's watching this is also cheering you on. Best of yep. luck against Absolutely, Edson mate. Barbosa, mate. Absolutely. Thank you. Let's go. Let's oh, go. All the best, all the best man. Cheers, Thank right. you, Cheers. boys. Thank you, yeah. Bye, man. Well, there you go. That was us chatting with uh, Lerone Murphy about his fight coming up against Edson Barbosa. Um, it's always good to chat to Lerone. It is. What, what an absolute diamond he is. Um, we should also mention um, that this episode is sponsored by Ferocious Fightwear. And, uh, and you can get a nice, healthy discount with Ferocious Fightwear at Ferocious Fightwear. No, the discount code is MMA Fan Show 15. There you go. Um, and as well as that, um, we have a new sponsor. We have a new sponsor. And... They are called Fat Candy. And uh, there you go. So Blake's holding up some goodies there. Freeze dried sweets. And uh, if you go over, give them a follow on uh, Instagram. They'll be tagged in uh, all of our posts. And I could do like the generation game where yeah. they're like, it's coming down on a conveyor belt. There's loads. So what you've got there, they're freeze dried oh, Skittles. So these if you are like the Skittles, you just literally freeze dry them. They pop and they're like a sugary treat. Very and, sugary treat. Uh, and if you just hit up the discount code, which is sweet MMA, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the way you said that, it could be sweet, like the vegetable, yeah, no. <laughs> like the sweet. Sweet. sweet MMA, sweet MMA. Uh, yeah, so go give um, Fat Candy a follow. Go give Ferocious Fight where I follow on the socials, and go check out their websites. And you've got two discount codes to go and uh, get your fight clobber and get your sweeties. So. Uh, we will be back next time. We will. Um, please subscribe to the show. And uh, we've got loads more good stuff coming your way, including our, uh, our kind of prediction show for who we think is going to be fighting at UFC Manchester. Is it a prediction? Is it your dream? I don't know. We'll Bit work of everything. it out. Bit of everything. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.